All right, so here we are in Inkscape, and we're going to show you just really, really quickly a couple of things about creating artwork here in Inkscape to turn into embroidery stitches. So we're kind of coming at you with the preface that you don't know anything about an Inkscape, anything about Ink Stitch, but you desperately want to create a logo. So we'll show you just a couple of real quick things um, just to kind of get you, wet your whistle and get you going just a little bit. There's a lot to learn, but uh, baby steps. So how do we go about creating uh, the artwork? So let me show you. So we're going to come in here and we're going to insert some artwork. So we're going to choose File and Import. And we're going to be importing this little guy. So this is a real world logo. We're just going to accept whatever these defaults are. This is a real world logo of something I just digitized the other day. And I think it's uh, not overly complicated, but not necessarily easy either. So we're in the fill and stroke uh, options, which you could find under object and fill and stroke right there. And so we're going to lower the opacity a little bit. I just think that helps us out a little bit. And then if we go to stroke and style, or excuse me, not stroke and style, and where's that at? Uh, up here, object properties. I usually have object properties. We're going to lock our uh, bitmap graphics so we can't accidentally move it. That's always helpful. And then we're going to switch over to this little icon, which is layer and objects. And again, all that could be found under object, layer and objects, fill, object properties, etc. Okay. So now we're going to go in and create some artwork. So here's the thing. We have basically two main stitch types, satin stitches and fill stitches. Okay. So when we're talking about satin stitches, the software is going to want two paths to create satin stitches. Okay. So we're going to come over here to our pen tool and we're going to create two paths and just real simple, all we're doing with our pen tool is creating straight lines. Okay, so we're going to click up here at the wing and click down here. That's it. And then right click to, to accept that. And then we're going to do the bottom. We're going to click up here, click down here. Right click to accept that. Now, one key thing uh, that you should know about when you're creating your paths is wherever you start, it doesn't matter. You can start down here at the bottom and go to the top if you want. But when we make this segment, we want to start start at the same side. So we'll start at the bottom and work to our top. Okay? Start at the bottom, work to our top. Start at the bottom, work to our top. Okay? So now we've created all straight line segments up to this point. So now if we switch over to our node tool, now we can just hover over that first path and just click and drag. Now this has a fill which it should not have. Not sure why. So all these are probably going to have a fill which they shouldn't have. So we'll just go through and make sure we turn off the fill if they do have a fill. Yep, all of them have a fill so that's okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select everything and tell everything not to have a fill. We don't want no fill. All right. So there we go. Now, when we're creating satin stitches, what the software is going to look for, it's going to look for two paths and it's going to want those two paths to be combined. So we have to click on one path, hold our shift key down and click on the other, go to path and go to combine. Same thing here. Click on this path, and this path, path, and combine. And then down here, click on this path, and this path, path, and combine. Okay? Now we're going to select all of those and convert all those to satin stitches in one go. So under the extensions, ink stitch, and uh, we'll come down here to params. We'll go to Satin Column, Custom Satin Column, and then we can just kind of watch how those satin stitches are generated for us and if we like that. 
And I think we like that. I'm pretty happy with those satin stitches. So we'll just go ahead and hit apply and quit. And we're ready to move on. Okay. So I, I'm going to show you this one too because this is a bit more complex here. So again, we're just going to grab our pen tool. Now we're only going to create straight line segments. So I'm clicking with my left mouse, clicking with my left mouse clicking with my left mouse. So we started up here and came down here. So this one, we're going to do the same thing. Straight line segments, straight line segments. Enter. Switch to our node tool, right? And click and drag. You follow the artwork. Click and drag, follow the artwork. Click and drag. Click and drag. Now, one thing I want to point out is when we're looking at this, there's a little bobble there. There's a little bobble there. Don't stress too much about that. Now, we can easily fix that, yes. But when you're converting this into stitches, ah, that's not really going to show anyhow. So let me just show you. So we'll select them both. We'll go up here to Path. We'll choose Combine because you do have to combine when we're doing satin stitches. We'll go to extension, we'll go to ink stitch, we'll go to params. And then we'll go to satin column, custom satin column. And you see what I was saying earlier where the little baubles, eh, that doesn't translate to stitches. So you don't have to be super precise. But there is something I don't like about this. This is all good except this. I don't like the angles of these stitches right here, but that's okay because it's really easy to fix. So we're just going to grab our pen tool and we're going to add some stitch angle lines so we can tell the software exactly how we want that to stitch out. So we'll go back to uh, select all those, combine our stitch angles with our main piece here, so under path combine. So now when we go back to ink stitch and params, now you will see satin column, custom satin column. And so now you can see all nice and tidy and clean. So that's exactly what we want. All right. Let me show you the last piece that uh, this again, this is just a little introductory video um, of, of how to go about creating artwork and, you know, utilizing some of the tools here. So what I'm going to show you is how to digitize the top half of the horse, the body, the main the main portion of the horse. When I actually went to digitize this, I would do the horn separate, the ear separate, the main separate, these two wings separate from the main body okay um, so that's just what I chose as the artist to do but how do you do how do you create this real irregular shape that's what a lot of people struggle with and there's no reason to struggle because it's really really super simple so we're gonna grab our pen tool and we're gonna click left click here and then if we hold down our control key that will make us a perfect straight line okay so that could be helpful but everywhere there's a change in direction, I'm just clicking with my left mouse button. Do you not worry about being super precise? We're just literally making it up as we go. Now you don't want to go crazy. Uh, you know, add, adding a, you know a million unnecessary nodes, but don't don't stress over adding too many. There's nothing special about what I did there, was there? We'll switch over to a node tool, and I'll show you how to go back in and clean it up. So we're just going to come in here, pull, pull. Nothing special there, right? Pull that out a little bit. We'll pull this out a little bit. We think that goes in, that goes out. Remember what I said earlier, don't worry about 
this being a little segmented, you're never going to see that in the final stitches. Now I did add a bunch of extra notes here just so I could really, because uh, I, I knew the, the, the nose was kind of funny. So if I, if I really wanted to add some definition here. And I knew the, the knee was rounded. The only way to get comfortable with this tool, I know I made it look easy, and it really is that easy. Um, you just have to use it and play with it a little bit, really. Um, but that's it. That's all there was to it. I mean, it's you know so incredibly simple. Now, this has a stroke, which we want to do. We do want to come down here and get rid of. So right-click down here where it says stroke and click on remove stroke then we're gonna go ahead and add a fill to that and then when we come up here to extensions ink stitch and params we could turn that into a fill stitch okay so automatically uh, fills that in with a fill stitch apply and quit and then just to finish this off we're gonna to go to extensions we're gonna to go to ink stitch Come down and visualize and export, and we'll do the simulation. Oh, we kind of messed up there because we had that piece selected. So we don't want to have nothing selected. And then go into Ink Stitch, Visualize, Simulator. And this, this will preview the whole design for us. So that's kind of cool. So we'll just skip to the end here. This has 1,168 stitches up to this point. And we can click on realistic. And that will kind of give us a pseudo realistic um, rendering of the design. It doesn't do a great job, but uh, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. Doesn't look too bad. Okay. So that's it. Now, there's a lot more to learn. We've got to learn about controlling uh, our thread jumps. You can see that's kind of a hot mess there. Our thread trims, if your machine uh, will recognize the commands for thread trims, you know, things like that. So there's more to learn, sequencing and all that. We didn't even talk about the various underlay options and all those things. Um, densities, uh, changing density and, and all that stuff. So there is a lot more to it, but as far as just kind of getting in there, converting some things to stitches and, and, and being able to have something you can put to, put to the machine, it's relatively straightforward. It's just a matter of getting in there and, uh, you know, fiddling around a little bit in there. Um, so I hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching.